Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical inequality. I don't think we've done radical inequalities before. Before We've done radical equations, and this is going to be a little different. So, if you're dealing with a radical expression, one thing to be careful about is the domain, especially if the root is even, or the index is even. So this expression is factorable, so let's go ahead and factor under the radical. Let's write it as x minus 1 times x minus 3. So I want this expression to be less than x. So how am I going to achieve that? Well, one thing I can do is first check the domain like I said earlier. In order for this to be defined for real numbers, it needs to be that such that x minus 1 times x minus 3 needs to be greater than or equal to 0. Otherwise, if you have a negative expression under the radical, it is not going to be a real number. And of course, since my original expression, the radical, is less than x, if x is negative or 0, that's going to be problematic because the square root of something has to be greater than or equal to 0. So in this case, x also needs to be positive. Great. So we have two conditions. We're going to be solving those first. But this doesn't solve the inequality. It just gives us some information about the domain. All right. So. To solve this, we can kind of put all this together in one table. So I do want, I do want something like this. Let's see. I do want, uh, I'm going to be using 0 as a root, 1 and 3. This is going to be my first expression, which is x minus 1 times x minus 3. And this is going to be the x. Now I do have two roots here and one root here. And using the method of intervals, I know that uh, 3 to infinity, this is positive, negative, and then positive. If x is positive, this is positive, and otherwise negative. Great. So here's what I want. I want the intersection. Uh, the top is going to be positive, and the bottom is going to be positive as well. So I'm looking for the plus plus. So here's my domain. My domain is going to be this interval and this interval. Okay. So that means x needs to be between 0 and 1 or greater than 3. But let's see if uh, any of those numbers will be included. So this gives me the interval 0 to 1. So is 0 included? Let's take a look at it. x cannot equal 0. x needs to be greater than 0. So 0 is not included, but 1 is included because of this. So I'm going to write it like this. 0 to 1, half closed interval. And then union, this is my domain by the way, union. 3 to infinity, but 3 is included, so I can include it, but infinity is never included. Great. So that's my domain. When I solve inequality, I have to pay attention to the domain. Now let's go ahead and talk about solving this inequality. I'm going to rewrite it in the original form to solve it because I already checked the domain, so I'm good with that. This needs to be less than x. Let's go ahead and square both sides. Obviously, squaring brings some problems, but not when you check the domain. Hopefully, you're not going to get extraneous solutions from here. So when you square both sides, you get this basic thing. x squared cancels out. That's why we kind of square both sides. And we can put the 4x on the right-hand side and leave the 3 on the left-hand side and then flip sides. So that looks like this. And this gives you x is greater than 3 fourths. So this is the solution to my inequality. But this needs to be consistent with the domain because if my solutions are not within the domain, then we have a problem. Okay, so I got to make sure that x is greater than 3 fourths is allowable. Let's go ahead and check here. Well, my domain says something like this, right? My x values needs to be, you know, uh, between 0 and 1 or 3 to infinity. Well, if you check 3 fourths here, 3 fourths, if x is greater than 3 fourths, this part is okay, but this part is not completely okay. Why? We have to cut it at 3 fourths. So my solution set then is going to look like this. My solution set, the solution set, is going to be made up of all the x values such that x is between 3 fourths and 1. Okay, so I'm going to write it like this. x is between 3 fourths and 1. And remember, 1 was included. So I'm going to include the 1, or x is going to be greater than or equal to 3. Why did we have to cut it like this? Because the solution does not completely overlap with the domain of the function. And this brings us to the 
end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, actually, this doesn't bring us to the end of this video because I wanted to show you something. And that is, I almost forgot, the graph of this function. What function? Well, I kind of graphed the square root of x squared minus 4x plus 3 minus x. And remember that we were saying that this needs to be less than zero because x was on the other side. And what are you looking for? Well, basically you're looking for the values uh, for which, uh, we're looking for the x values for which the y values are less than zero. In other words, you want y values to be negative. So your x value is going to be cut off here. That's the 3 fourths value. And this is going to be the 3 here. Of course, the Desmos doesn't really show us the open dot or the closed dot, unfortunately, but that's okay. You get the idea. And this graph should show you the solution graphically. And this actually really brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.